So if you haven't tried using ink, this video might help you to think a little different. And yes, paint is awesome, comes in different variety of colors, and of course many different brands, many different, well, monetary values. However, ink is another medium which is also very useful. And it's useful where otherwise paint or even dye can't get the job done. These are opaque inks, the brand you see in the bottle. That's what I use in this project. And for the black, I use the Liquitex because I already had it. In essence, the pigment on inks is very, very strong. And yes, it can stain if you're not careful, not only your clothes, but actually the project you are working on. So masking is essential. But let's get started. So I want to begin by showing you what I did with this ink. I bought these extra hands from another artist and he printed five different sets of expressive hands. And yes, I did ink the hands, the arms, and of course the cowl on the Batman you see in the background. And these hands were actually blue because they're meant for that well, that classic Batman that we just received. However, I wanted black. Well, because my customer wanted to have his Batman in black. But the dye did not take well. So I had to use ink because paint didn't take well. And the ink took that much better and got the job done. This is the end result of those hands being painted. It is a glossy finish, so if you want to spray them down with a matte finish, this is the time to do so. But you have to allow it to dry. If you look at the cowl, I did use a different sculpt and it did mar the surface. So even though it dries and it actually is pretty much a permanent uh, um, pigment, you still have to let it dry. You still have to seal it to actually protect it. And of course, choosing the right head so you don't get those scars. Now, as far as the joints, the dye did not take well. So painting these were essential, but I painted them with the ink. And yes, you still have to go in and dremel out or sand away certain parts of it so that the uh, paint rub isn't as excessive. Now this is one instance where I use the dye on the major part of this leg. This is a Superman leg, extra pieces that I have. But the ball joint is a different plastic, so is the knee joint. And that's where I used the ink. And it took incredibly well. But somebody did ask, well, how do you apply it? This is the way that I applied the ink onto my project. Now I'm gonna use spare parts, not an actual project, because this video really isn't about customizing a specific figure. This is just an idea to give you what you can do with ink along with paint along with dye. Now the problem with dye is you have to wait for it to bleed out and you can't just start painting on it and putting things back together. That dye will transfer. Now in this case you already see that I pre-painted this figure with white ink. Not white paint or primer. It's white ink. I'm using that as a basis to then lay an actual color. Why? Because the body is black. By the way, this is a Superman Project One body. And I like the actual contours of this body for a specific project. Here, I'm just using it to show you how to airbrush the actual ink onto this. Anywhere you don't apply that white base, it's not gonna work because it's black you got to have a white base to apply a different color. Now, in the instance you have to get into those joints, yes, you may still have to sand to make room for that dye. In the case that it's a white plastic or a light colored plastic, you may not have to. Such as in the case of that Superman leg, I did not sand the joints or the ball joint. The ink took really well to that plastic whereas the dye did not. And of course, whereas in the dye did not take well on parts of the larger plastic, I just went ahead and evened it out with the ink 
and it turned out well. Now you can also mix your own colors to make the colors you need. Here, yellow and blue make green. I added a little bit of black to dirty it up a little bit. Again, I'm applying it with an airbrush. And here, you can now see what the ink looks like over the white ink. And you can see that it actually looks green. Anywhere there is no white ink, once again, it's just gonna be black. Now you can use that to your advantage. You can create shading that way. But if you don't use a base coat, it's gonna be difficult and you're gonna be struggling through and through. But that's the principle with many of the light colors, such as yellow and white itself, maybe translucent reds or oranges. It just doesn't work unless you have a base. Now, somebody did ask, well, can you brush it on? Well, let me show you what happens when you start brushing this stuff on here. It just doesn't work as well. It's best to airbrush it. Now, let me show you here. This is where I didn't actually paint. It's still white. And on this side, I actually overlaid green over to the blue. So you can make a great transition of tones. And this is where your watercolor um, theory comes in how can you mix colors on top of colors to get another even after you're painted so yeah it can be overspray but it can also be to your benefit if that's what you're looking for now notice here in the torso because i did not take this apart i just painted right on there if you use a brush over any of this you have brush marks that means you're gonna have to wait for it to dry, paint over it again, you got more brush marks, wait for it to dry again, and it's just an ongoing sequence. And as you can see here, um, yeah, it just really doesn't look as good. You need more coats, and you have brush marks, and you have more coats to erase those. So, indoor brush is essential. These are the inks that I used. Once again, I only have these four colors. Well three colors and black and white are just really values. I hope this video gave you some ideas to go off of and try in your own projects. Remember, these are just ideas. You don't have to implement those, but the more ideas you have, the more creative you can be with what you've got or if you plan to expand. Now, continue customizing those figures. And remember, this channel is about to reach 8,000 subscribers. And we may have to change the format just to accommodate and keep the interest. So stay tuned. We'll see you next time.